to discuss the results for the quarter ended March 22. It is pleasure of having with us top management team from Alki Lamin, represented by Mr. Yogesh Kothari, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Kirat Patel, Executive Director, Mr. K. P. Raj Gopalan, Corporate Advisor, Mr. Chintamani Satte, General Manager Legal and Company Secretary, and Ms. Kanchan Shinde, Chief Financial Officer, Alki Lamins. Without further ado, I will now hand over the floor to the management for making the opening comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dilek. I welcome you all to the Investors Conference for the quarter, uh, the fourth quarter of year 22. This was a very challenging year to al Qaeda mines, and our results are showing that. Most of our raw materials and energy input costs went up by a large percentage. We managed to pass some of the increases in our price to our customers, but that was not enough. Things have started looking better with many of the raw material prices coming down to some reasonable levels. We have put more capacity on ground for one of our products that is acetonitrile. We are also in the process of establishing a new large amine plant at Kurkum, which would come on stream in the next nine months. I will ask Mr. Kirat Patel to take over. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Mr. Kothari has said, yes, it's been a challenging year. We have grown on the top line by about 25%, as you have seen, year to year. Uh, and most of that growth uh, has come from price rises. But the price rises have not been sufficient to uh, keep our margins intact because the raw material prices uh, or input prices, including the energy costs like coal and ammonia and all the other raw materials, have gone up considerably, especially in the last six months. Fortunately, they have stabilized now. And uh, as slowly we are able to pass on some of these increases onto our uh, customers. Looking forward, we are a little optimistic that the uh, worst is over. However, it's uh, difficult to say because there's a lot of volatility in the market due to the Chinese issues and Ukraine war and all the logistical uh, uh, issues people are facing. Uh, with that, I think uh, we can open out the uh, listening to questions from uh, the uh, participants. Nilesh, could you lead the thing? Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Karan Khanna from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, sir, my first question is on your gross margins. Uh, we've seen last one year has been challenging and uh, now given the uncertainties with crude oil uh, prices remaining at more than $100 a barrel, uh, is it fair to assume that uh, we've seen a similar scenario or a similar uh, uh, you know, phase in around 11, 12, 13, 14? So is it fair to assume that your gross margins also should uh, uh, be closer to the range we've seen in 11 to 14 or you think that uh, possibly with a lag of one or two quarters, margin should revert closer to 50 odd percent that we were seeing earlier? Karan, uh, uh, good afternoon. And uh, the margins, uh, as you see, are stabilizing and probably will increase, improve as we pass on some of the increases in our costs on to customers. The process has begun towards the end of last year uh, and uh, continues just uh, this thing. Looking forward, we are not unable to say how much the raw material prices will go up or down. 
but at the moment we are optimistic that the margins will improve as we go along sure and second you know uh, we've seen that ineos has recently announced a uh, 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 acid nitrogen capacity expansion by around 15000 tons uh and also we've seen your domestic competitor also increasing their acid nitrogen capacity by another 15000 tons so to what extent do you foresee this could uh, possibly impact the realizations for the product well uh, i can tell you one thing that uh, acid nitrogen is a growing product and i do not foresee any issues in uh, capacity because a lot of things were imported up to now and uh, it is going to be challenging but uh, we are very confident that uh, the quality and the service which we have will definitely give us an edge so we told and we have already established a market and we have uh, we will continue to do better in next to next sure and lastly uh, can you give us some sense on what was the volume growth uh, uh, for fi 22 over 21 and uh, now with the new asset uh, nitrogen plant getting commissioned uh, what have been the utilizations for the quarter uh, for the new plant that's my last question thank you okay so most of the 25% growth rate or uh, 24 25% growth rate on the top line has been largely due to price uh, almost two thirds to 70% has been price and the rest has been volume as far as uh, acetonitrile is concerned we have uh, begun the plant in the last quarter of the uh, uh, last year january to march and slowly it is being ramped up looking forward we think between the two plants we will probably hit 60 to 70% of utilization of our capacity and we are hoping to push it to even further because there is a market out there but it is of course as you can appreciate that uh, introducing a new plant new market and uh, this thing it takes a little time so we hope to get to the 60 70% capacity utilization both plants put together sure thank you uh, that that's it from my end thank you and all the best thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Rajiv Rupani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, regarding the price of uh, acetonitrile. What is the price per kg right now? And uh, yes, please answer this. Then I'll ask my follow-up question. Uh, the price of acetonitrile is varying between 250 to 280 rupees. It and uh, it depends also on. how much imports have come in and how much stocks are there but it is varying in that range okay and uh, so uh, you know 3 4 years back the price used to be 120 a kg and then there was a uh, demand for it shot up to 300 to 400 a kg so do you uh, with balaji also adding a new plant and so do you see that the price of acn uh, going down below 200 a kg Well, it's always possible if uh, there is more supply than the demand it could happen and also there are imports also so there is always a possibility but then you have to see at what rate you can operate at and what is your uh, cost of production and how you manage your plant okay and uh, one more question if uh, the prices of ac and drop to do we have uh, capabilities to produce uh, tetrahedra for one we don't make tetrahedra okay uh, and uh, i have a, uh, another question uh, you have uh, in last con call you have said that uh, you would be doing a capex for higher amine so could you tell us uh, what what product exactly you will be launching and going forward and what new uh, uh, specialty chemicals uh, will you be uh, producing so we are putting up a uh, very large plant at kurkum for making ethyl amines and our capacity uh, will be quite high compared to whatever capacity is there and our existing plants also we have technologies to change them over to other amines so we do not foresee any issues as far as our plant performance okay thank you thank you 
The next question is from the line of Manish Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you for taking my question. Uh, my only question is about the market share. Uh, as we've seen uh, our, our other competitor, the domestic competitor, so he's been, done the uh, volume uh, about the sales volume about 34%, and uh, we've done almost uh, 10 11 Is there any market share loss? Uh, that's the only question I have. Sorry, can you repeat the question, please, slowly? Uh, so, yeah, sure. Uh, my only question is about the market share. Uh, is there any market share loss because uh, our, our other competitor, the domestic competitor, has done the volume about 34% uh, up, and uh, we've only done 10-11% uh, up? Uh, I think no, I think that's the question. Question. is, uh, one of the products which we do not manufacture is what is uh, really uh, and uh, aided our uh, sort of co-producer, uh, we do not make dimethyl formamide, which is what has uh, to a large extent helped our uh, co-producer. Okay, so so there is no market share loss at all in our acetonitrile and other amino products. Uh, sorry, what is the question? Hello. Uh, so it seems like we lost the connection for the current participant. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Senthil Kumar from Joint Ray Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, can you please give the breakup of other expenses for the full year? because it has increased significantly in the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah, the other expenses includes our uh, power water fuel. Uh, and in the fuel uh, and power, as you all know that the energy costs have substantially increased over the last uh, uh, six months. And in, in fact, the last three months, much more. Coal, uh, which we use for heating, has, uh, you know, almost tripled from what it used to be a year ago. Mm -hmm. So that is the large extent where the other expenses have gone. The rest of it has not really changed that much. Oh, okay. okay thanks, guys. That's just Power, water, fuel, which you see, has significantly uh, changed the uh, other expenses. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Ropani from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you once again. Uh, you had said that uh, a competitor uh, produces DMF. So I would like to ask, uh, do we have capabilities to produce DMF and uh, please let us know. Uh, currently, we do not have the capability, but we have the process, and at some stage, uh, we may do it. But before that, we will be adding some more methylamine capacity, because uh, dimethylamine is needed for making DMF, and that is what is going to be needed in future. So we are, at the same time, we will be planning a new methylamine spark, maybe two years down the line. Okay, and what is our uh, current ethyl amines capacity and how much are we adding? Methyl amines we are... Uh, ethyl. Uh, ethyl amines currently we are about... 20, no, uh, we are about... Uh, so we are looking at... Uh, yeah, about 20, 22,000 tons a year. 20 to 20 currently. And we are looking to increase that to about 35,000 tons. Okay, and any other new specialty chemicals in the pipeline, apart yes, from methylamine? Yeah, there are a few, but currently we are not disclosing those names. Once we are at a stage where we can disclose it, we will come back to it. But they are at the development stage and at the seed marketing stage. So once they become to an extent where we can start producing, we will be coming in the market. And so lastly, your outlook on acidic, uh, acid prices? 
Acetic acid, of course, has given us a lot of problems last year. It had gone up so substantially, it really affected us. Now, it is there starting to uh, stabilize, but still it is at, uh, on the higher side uh, compared to what it used to be a year ago. So, what is it currently and uh, going forward, do you expect it to come down? Yes, uh, currently it is around 60, 60, 65, 70 rupees in that range, you know, per kilogram. Okay. And going forward, what's the outlook? That is difficult to predict just now, but uh, uh, I, I hope it remains in this, in this range at least, you know. Yeah, it has gone up to over 90 and it has been as low as 35, you know. So, it's been very volatile in the last uh, year and a half. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsha from Marcellus Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, my question was regarding capital expenditure. So in Q2, we are guided for a capex of around 170 to 200 crore for the whole year of FI22. However, we have ended up spending around 250 crores of capex. So have we done, have we pre-pawned our capex of FI23 to FI22 or is there some other reason? Uh, it's a combination of two things. One is uh, we have been... Uh, slightly ahead of schedule in our uh, expend, uh, in our implementation and also prices have gone up. Steel, cement, uh, all the uh, inputs have gone up. It's a combination of both. So we spent about 240 crores uh, against the targeted about 210 crores, you know. And uh, going forward in the next year, we hope to spend uh, maybe about 300 crores. Okay. And my uh, second question... Uh, Further uh, uh, escalation in prices does not happen, and uh, we are able to implement our uh, projects within budgets. Okay, and uh, my second question was regarding the uh, the Kurkum capex. So we are doing almost 350 crores capex for around 13, 14 thousand tons of ethylamine uh, capacity. So uh, uh, are we do, planning to do something else as well at this uh, in this capex? because this capex seems to be a bit, uh, a little bit on the higher side, given the uh, 15,000 uh, tons capacity of ethylamine. It's not 15,000 tons, it's 35,000 tons. So we are, we are setting up 35,000 incremental? Yes, uh, 100 to 125 tons a day. Okay, okay, okay. got it, got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shant Arena. Uh, the next question is from the line of Reena Shah from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. Sir, I wanted to know that uh, uh, in which uh, products, because uh, what I understand is majority of the products like acetonitrile, ethylamine, methylamine, these are the products where prices are driven by market forces. So how, in which products do you think you can actually pass on this higher prices of raw materials to customers and that can improve your margins? Uh, see, uh, almost everything is market driven. However, the issue is that the market is set up by all the producers and the competitors. And all of us, uh, as it happens, have the same uh, or similar cost structures given uh, that our technologies are similar. So, sooner or later, the prices settle to a level which is acceptable to the market. Yes, once in a while, if somebody becomes a little more aggressive, he comes, a new player comes in, that, there is a temporary setback. But otherwise, the market play itself takes care of the margins and the uh, this thing. Sometimes there is an overhang, sometimes there is a shortage. So you do have the margins going up and down. But by and large, because all the competitors have similar technologies or uh, similar exposure to their cost structures, uh, the market forces prevail, you know. Okay. Okay. And so one more question. Uh, what are the capacity additions that have come in last year and what are expected to come in terms of volumes in next year? 
लास्ट ईयर कैपेसिटी एक्सपेंशन हैज बीन ऑन एसिटोल नाइट्राइल विच गॉट कमीशन टूवर्ड टूवर्ड द एंड ऑफ द थर्ड क्वार्टर एंड एक्चुअली द प्रोडक्शन स्टार्टेड इन द लास्ट क्वार्टर दैट वॉज एसिटोल इट्स एन एटीन थाउजेंड टन प्लांट इन द हिच मेकिंग एसिटो नाइट्राइल the next year we hope to commission towards the last quarter of 2223 uh, or the first quarter of 2324 and ethyl means plant of uh, about 30 35000 tons uh, as we just mentioned earlier okay. there are a few smaller other uh, capital expenditures which are what we might call uh, um, expansions to our existing range wherever we find a little uh, tightness in the uh, capacities okay so as uh, we see that there are a lot of companies which are going under a very specialized chemicals wherein they can actually you know drive the margins and dictate the prices so are you looking for something on those lines or you are looking only for those uh, products which are right now in your portfolio uh you know we are uh, largely in the business of what we call intermediates Hmm. which means we are not commodities and we are not what you might call performance or specialty chemicals where which are sold but we have a few products which are unique and where we are able to set of course within reason uh, prices which are comfortable but uh, yes by large what we would define our company into an intermediate company rather than a uh, you know a performance chemicals company Okay. Okay. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bardev from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, team. Uh, good to talk to you once again. Uh, so my first question is: uh, If I look at your gross block uh, in the last five years, uh, it has almost tripled. and we are looking at another 50% increase in our gross gross block over the next uh, couple of years uh, so just wanted to know from a, um, a fundamental perspective that uh, is this um, uh, entire uh, capex which we are going to incur going to get consumed in the domestic market through import substitution or are we also looking at uh, an export market opening up uh, big time for us uh you know the uh, expenditure is on capital uh, expansion of our uh, capacities uh, normally we have seen uh, that about 20% of our uh, sales are international and about 80% are domestic perhaps that ratio may move a little more towards export going over but not significantly i don't think but largely it's on the growth of the market that's what we are uh, trying to catch up with and uh, sometimes we are just behind the growth or sometimes we are ahead of the growth but by and large there is growth in the market and fair to say that most of our uh, domestic competitors uh, expanded capacity will also get consumed in the domestic market uh, no both of us have i think both have a mix of export and domestic different products and uh, we have an uh, overlap of about maybe 40% in each other's product ranges uh, so but given that they, we are in some products which he is not in and uh, he is in some products which we are not in uh, the competition is uh, in about 40% to 50% of our sales uh, top line and uh, both of us have exports and uh, domestic sales because so the fear is that uh, uh, the uh, commonality between both is now sort of uh, 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 meaning earlier the commonality was not that high now the commonality is sort of rising by the day and if both the companies are looking at selling this much in the domestic market then is there a fear that there could be some price wars in order to get your capacity utilized or you don't uh, envisage that kind of a scenario uh you know it it, uh, it is always a possibility it has uh, there have been periods of time when uh, there has been an overhang of capacity and there have been periods of time when uh, both of us have been behind the curve and there has been a shortage but uh, 
this is part of uh, and uh, you know part of business and it's a cycle sometimes you are ahead sometimes you are behind and don't forget there's a third player also rcf so is rcf also adding a lot of capacity no they are not adding capacity but they are still a significant player in the methylamines uh, market and they do overlap some of their products with uh, more with uh, balaji than with us Lastly, sir, many congrats. Uh, uh, good to see your senior management team also expanding. So, uh, given that you guys have done very well, so good to see the uh, senior management team also expanding. So, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Mochal from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. So, just to clarify, uh, uh, the methyl capacity was expanded in FY21. We had, I believe, uh, taken from 30 to 46,000 tons. That was already done in FY21, if my numbers are right. Yes, you're right. Okay. And uh, so, broadly, sir, uh, across capacities, uh, what would be the utilization in FY22 be? Uh, excluding the acetyl new expansion, I believe that was only for the last quarter. You are talking about methylamines, right? Uh, so across chain. So methyl, ethyl and acetonitrile. Oh, they are very differently uh, placed, each of them, because acetonitrile, we have just expanded the capacity, so obviously the, there is a yeah. lot of headroom. In methylamines, uh, we have expanded uh, a year and, year and a half ago in the age, and that is likely to be used up next year, so we'll uh, be probably using some part of the Patalanga plant. If you remember, we have a plant in Patalanga, which is a swing plant between methyl and methyl, and we'll probably be using the methyl plant. And maybe two years, as Mr. Kothari just mentioned, two years, three years down the line, we will need another methylamines plant. Uh, that leaves us with ethylamines, which we have just uh, mentioned that we are expanding that capacity because we feel we are reaching uh, the limits of it by the end of this year. So we will be expanding the capacity at the end of the, this year, which hopefully will last, that capacity will last us for another five years at least. Sure, and so, uh, so currently, uh, methyl will be probably what 80, 85 percent utilized. Ethyl will be somewhere in the range of uh, 90s, and acetonitrile, except the new expansion, is largely fully utilized. For uh, FI22. The expansion here is fully utilized. For FI22. Yeah. So, uh, and so secondly, uh, the next was on uh, the ethyl expansion. Now that's a significant expansion, uh, uh, the 30,000 tons that you mentioned. So uh, how does this pr process work? Is it a batch process? Is it a continuous process that you have to run the full 30,000 at one go? Or I mean, that, that flexibility is available for you? Uh, it's a continuous process, but you can run it in campaigns. Okay. Like you can run, you know, uh, when you start a plant, you run it for say 20 days of the month. Then you wait for the inventory to go on and start again 20 days later, you know. So it, it's a kind of a, a combination of continuous and, uh, well, not exactly, it's not that, it's continuous but in campaigns. Got it. So at a time it runs to the full extent, but you have the flexibility to run it for 15, 20 to manage the yes. management mm -hmm. cycle. And start stop is not an issue in terms of operating, a significant not, issue, I believe, somewhat, but it's not, not a significant, significant issue. Sure. And so, uh, the last thing was, uh, so uh, the acetonitrile product that we had, I mean, uh, uh, we, we have spoken about it earlier. Uh, so th there was not much competition here. Some imports were coming, but it's, uh, it's a product which find application in growing segments. So my thing was, I mean, as the costs are rising, I understand the uh, lag between the price increase and the, uh, the cost increase and the price increase. But otherwise, uh, is there any other reason why the cost increase should not reflect in the price increase and you manage and, and you maintain your per kg margin or your percentage margin i mean what i'm trying to understand is there a competing product to acetonitrile on price where people want to shift to the other alternate product because it is cheaper and which probably holds a cap on pricing not not really because uh, acetonitrile on its own has its own properties and usefulness which is increasing now in more uses also uh, it was also used in this uh, vaccine production uh, which was there and the new uses are going up. In fact, there's a new plant coming up in Germany 
uh, is being it's around 30,000 tons capacity, which will come on stream after two years. This is done by Neos, but they will be doing it from aceto acrylonitrile route, where acetonitrile is a byproduct. So the quality of the way we manufacture, we manufacture from acetic acid and ammonia. While that is definitely a much, our technology is much uh, greener, we can call it, because really speaking, there are no side products. So it's all getting recirculated within the system. Hardly anything goes out. So this is something which is uh, very uh, positive for our uh, plant, our, our uh, company, and uh, many of the international players also prefer our type of products. And since now we have two locations where we make acetonitrile, uh, it gives more confidence to the customers that uh, they can get their material from two different locations. So that's why we are very positive on acetonitrile. Right, sir. So basically, uh, to be sure, there is no alternate uh, product because of price, which can influence its demand. It's pure; it's uh, its own individual demand supply patterns which decide, which drive its price. Yeah, this is to the best of my knowledge because it's uh, used mainly as a solvent, and there could be some more expensive solvents also which can replace it. But I will not of anything which is directly competing with acetonitrile. Right? Sure, sir. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Jimodia from Annual Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Nirav. Yeah. Sir, like uh, uh, what you have guided in terms of uh, the expansion for ethyl, I mean, so based on our current capacity, how much would be the capacity additions we would see over next two years, one from ethylamines and probably when when we would set up those methylamines new plants? So what sort of capacity increases which we are looking on our current based capacity? Uh, so you are looking at, uh, just I'm talking only about the amines part, not the derivatives or the specialities or anything. The amines part, you're looking at something like about 30% increase with this ethylamines plant. Okay. The two years down the line, the methylamines, two or three years down the line, when we set up the methylamines plant, we haven't yet uh, uh, finalized what kind of capacity it is, but, but it will again be in that not less than 150 tons a day, so not less than 45,000 tons. So another 30% increase is likely to happen then. But that 30% is is after the addition of this 30% what we would add for the ethylamine. Exactly. So if today it was, say, 100,000 tons, uh, ethylamines would add 30,000, so it would become 130,000. And then it would add another 145,000 tons, so it became 175,000. Correct. Correct. And so, so from where we stand, you're looking at something like a 75,000, a 75% increase over a three-year period looking forward. Correct. And, sir, and that should take us uh, reasonably, comfortably over the next five, seven years uh, if the market keeps growing. Correct, correct. So, so basically, we can safely see a volume growth of around 15 to 17 percent coming on for alkylamines for next four to five years, depending on some of the years where the volumes could be lesser or some of the years where the volumes would be higher based on the demand supply dynamics. I agree with you there. We have always managed that 10 to 15 percent increase in this, uh, this thing. And I think looking forward, I don't see, of course, given all the nightmares that our customers are having with uh, the Chinese uh, in the intermediates they use, yeah. uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to keep the volumes up. But uh, oh, looking forward, I think all that will get sorted out. You know, sooner or later, people will sort out all that. It's already settling down and people will uh, find alternate sources and move on, you know. Correct. And so this methylamines expansion would be coming up in the Dahej only or would we require a new land altogether for this expansion? So that would be altogether a new setup of methylamines, single location, another plant or would be in combination with our existing plant? No, I think we'll have to look for some more land because along with methylamines we'll put up some derivatives. Other, other plants also. So definitely we are we are already looking for some land. So okay. maybe in uh, next six months or years time we'll have a 
plot of land which will be suitable for us. Correct. Sir, my second question is on uh, on uh, on the improvements and the learnings probably in this uh, challenging last two years. So. and some of the years we had uh, the demand led problems some of the years were the supply led problems based on the global supply logistic challenges so uh, we have been proving time and again in terms of reducing our cost of production either through process optimization or let's say through product innovation so i just wanted to ask that when we had set up our first acetonitrile plant and the learnings whereby uh, we operated at 100% so could this plant be a uh, be an example in terms of some more improvements happening on the input output side or let's say some of the uh, process innovations which which has help us to uh, make some sustainable amount of improvements over next 4 5 years if you can just explain your thought process on the same so we we have done it uh, in our existing plant we have been right from the beginning because the plant i mean the overall design was developed within our Uh, R&D yeah. and from pilot plant stage to putting up a plant and over a period of time we have been changing lots of process conditions you know okay. and going on improving the process that has helped us in overall yield of our raw materials as well as uh, energy consumption you know so we are at a stage where uh, we are producing Acetonitrile at a very competitive rate. You know. And our new plant, new plant has been designed accordingly. You know. Correct, correct. So, sir, is it safe to assume that based on uh, based on uh, your uh, uh, process optimization, what you have done, the cost of production for the expanded plant would be lesser than the existing capacity for acetonitrile? Yes. In short, yes. <laughs> and so lastly i would like like to ask in terms of our uh, user industry so i think we are predominantly into pharma agri which predominantly contributes 70 75% of our uh, volume so has the mix change towards more from agro side from last 2 to 3 years given the kind of challenges what you have seen globally in terms of uh, less material being available for uh, agro intermediates and the growth for which we are seeing on that side sir so anything the mix has changed over last one and a half two years uh, in terms of our revenue combination it may not significantly because uh, there is always some new product coming up in agro also yeah which is uh, always uh, i mean some of them do need uh, the means in so you do some you gain some no maybe a couple of percentage points here and there but nothing significant to say that there is a trend in the other direction got it got it and sir uh, lastly if i can just touch upon some of the things so uh, i think predominantly ethylamines also goes in the production of rubber chemicals and our existing one of the player has also done the expansion of the same so probably this new plant was would help us to cater to the expansion of our end user customer or would would there be some another user industries and the demand drivers because of which we are setting up such a bigger plant so that would definitely i mean our existing rubber chemicals and uh, customers they will definitely be fine from us but it's not significant from point of view of our capacity okay. and uh, it will definitely help us and overall i think uh, their capacity is whether they've already expanded or they will be coming up now uh, as to be seen yeah. and they are of course uh, uh, doing better mainly because of things happening in china also yeah. and lot of the rubber industry or the tire industry and all yeah. has started doing extremely well in india correct so our requirement is also going up because of that got it sir got it thank you sir thank you for answering the questions in detail and uh, all the best thank you the next question is from the line of nilesh goge from hdfc securities please go ahead yeah hi sir so uh, you always mention that your kurkum plant uh, is fungible and you can switch from methylamine to ethylamine and ethylamine and back to methylamine so can you guide us 
on the how the the difference between the process conditions uh, where very close or uh, what i understand is methyl amines and ethyl amines the process conditions or pressure temperature are quite different and they are uh, i mean so how you manage that uh, the plant at plant level and how much time it takes to switch from one product to another product uh, can you just elaborate on this Yes, in Purkum we don't have methylamines. We are uh, making only ethylamines. And uh, at Patalganga, the existing plant, we have modified in a manner by which we can do a swing. You know, sometimes make ethylamines, sometimes make methylamines, and also sometimes isopropylamines. So, so we this is our in-house uh, uh, technology, you can call it, and we have been very successful in that. We also used to make butyl amines also, and and of course we make ethyl hexyl amine. So that is continuing. I mean, butyl amine we stopped in between, but at a good opportunity we may start also. Okay. And uh, do we have to make modification in the plant in terms of pipelines and uh, some some basal addition or etc. etc. Yeah, we have to switch? have a, like uh, a proper uh, reactor, you know. Uh, depends again on the catalyst, but for methylamine the catalyst is different than for the other amines. Uh, it's a matter of lining up the thing, and there is a campaign between campaigns. There is a uh, process which takes about five to six days to line up, to clean up and line up the plants and to make alternate products. Okay. Okay. So the some equipment are meant specifically for one. Some equipment are meant for the other, and a large number of equipment are common to both. Okay. Okay. And and, and how you manage the uh, temperature and pressure, sir? Because in Mumbai, we the reactor require different pressure when you operate ethyl ethyl amines. And so so how you part of the Technology, you know, I mean, your plants are designed to take care of various temperatures and various pressures. So I don't think there is any issue in that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Javier Shikawat from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Thank you a lot for taking my question. So, firstly, in terms of the Capex that you could be doing two three years out the green field capacity expansion. What could be the estimated capex for that, and uh, are you likely going to fund it via internal accruals only? Uh, well, we can only look uh, forward towards uh, maybe uh, the next year and a little bit to year after. Uh, do we we do have plans beyond that, but they are still not formed. But looking at the next year and the year after, we are planning to do it through internal approvals mainly. Of course, there will be some periods, uh, maybe three to six months, where we may have to dip into our working capital limits. But uh, at the moment, we don't think we'll be taking any term uh, debt in, uh, for the planned uh, capital expenditure over the next two years. Uh, that's helpful, Kirasta. And secondly, uh, we have also seen your competitor significantly expand capacities across newer product lines, uh, which could be a DNC or a DMF or a N butylamines as well. Now, to diversify away from some key products. Now, what is Alkyl thinking about in terms of either focusing on the key products where you have competency, or are you also looking to go beyond them? So, what could be your future plans regarding that? And uh, if you could also highlight. Any of the few new products you might have introduced over the last few years that today form a sizable portion of your revenues, apart from the key products that you already have. Well, acetonitrile was a new product uh, which has made a sizable part of our revenue. Uh, that was introduced uh, about uh, four years ago, five years ago. Significantly, for it was uh, of course uh, trial runs were about seven, eight years ago, but. Uh, Significantly, we expanded capacity about four years ago. We have a product called diethyl hydroxylamine, which is also a significant product. Then diethyl amino profilamine, which is also a significant product. Then we have products like DPR and uh, 
there are some specialty products which are not that large a volume maybe a few hundred tons for the for the annum and but they contribute significantly so 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 apart from acetron and dry are there any other products which have a capacity of over say 15000 tons per annum let's say apart from their dma hcl as well so dma hcl ethylamines methylamines uh, acetonitrile la all over 10000 15000 tons no i i understand that but say apart from the uh, apart from the traditional one uh, apart from these four uh, uh, there are no and the mapa may come close but yes yeah, not large volume to not all the same area a few thousand tons but just below 10 okay. sure sure thanks a lot for answering so the propyl amine will be probably dialyl amine so so there are a few which are uh, significant not uh, as big as uh, uh, acetonitrile or methylamines but significant sure sure that's helpful thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Reena Shah from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for giving me another opportunity. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask, since you have seen a significant increase in power and fuel cost, are you looking to uh, set up some renewable energy like solar plants or something on those lines? So we do already have a solar plant. We are adding some more capacity in the solar plant, but that will not. Uh, uh bring down the cost significantly you know so the main okay. issue is of course the coal price which is which has gone up in the last 6 months a lot you know mm-hmm. so we only hope okay. that over a period of in a short time this thing stabilizes you know? okay 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 thank you sir that's it really there is two ways to uh, reduce your energy cost one is of course as is could i wonder about en- enhancing our solar uh, uh power generation capacities which we are doing in the next 3 months there will be another 2 megawatts added and perhaps mm-hmm. a little later in the year for the age we will have a, a maybe another 2 megawatts but along with that we also are increasing our turbine generations of electricity within the sites because we use the coal to uh, uh create steam at high pressure and then use it use that with extraction steam to make electricity so that's another additional uh, source of uh, electricity uh, unfortunately they the i mean as it happens the power costs and the fuel costs they're always balancing you know so what could be the percentage of your power and fuel cost as percentage of revenue uh would be 200 so About 14 percent, I think, power water fuel. 13 to 14 percent, it will be. It was uh, it, it was down to about eight nine, and now it's increased. Okay, okay, that's it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants: please limit your questions to one per participant. For any follow-up, may be requested to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Looking to your expansion plans, etc., is it safe to uh, assume that in next three years our profit and turnover will double? Uh, yes, sir. Hopefully. <laughs> no, but that's all. Yes, I mean that's our uh, plans uh, and our hopes that it will manage it. Yes. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Jain from Galaxy International. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, sir, any new products uh, that we are looking to introduce now? Um, let's say so. Any significant new products which we have completed R and D and uh, kind of trial runs and looking to introduce in FI twenty three? Yeah, we have several products in pipeline, but we will be only. Uh, sort of uh, talking about it only once they become commercial, you know. At this stage, right. we do not like to disclose that. Right, but we have several in the pipeline, right? Yes. yes. Okay, and just a very small question, sir. So when uh, when do we anticipate our EBITDA margin to go back to, let's say, the mid twenties uh, range that we guided earlier? Well, I hope we as soon as possible, but. Uh, 
if if the cost of raw materials come down a little bit and they don't go up further, plus the cost of uh, energy that is coal comes down significantly, then we are very confident we can bring up the habitat to a very decent level. Yes, but uh, sir, we are not passing it on to the customers. Uh, let's say over the last uh, two quarters, I think we are taking our heat ourselves. But uh, when do we expect that to pass uh, to the customers, at least partially, so that? Uh, yeah. No, we are trying to do that, uh, but we cannot just pass on complete increase. Otherwise, uh, they will get into issues, and then we have competition from. Imports also, so we have to be very careful how much we can pass it off. No? Okay, right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anurag Patel from Roha Asset Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, can you share what is the total installed capacity across three sites, Dhaesh, Patal Ganga, and Kurkum, separately? Uh, as I mentioned earlier about the amines, because uh, the amines capacity may be about say 100,000, 90 to 100,000 tons, and uh, by the end of the year we'll add another 30,000 tons, and going forward uh, two, three years down the line, another 45,000 tons. So uh, currently it would be that the other products are a little more difficult to because there are multi-product uh, campaigns which run. Sometimes they are at 10 tons a day and sometimes they are 40 tons a day. So depending on the market, the capacity is kind of swing. So that's difficult. But uh, acetonitrile being a single product plant, yes, the, the capacity, as we said, is between 28 to 30,000 tons. Both plants put together. Okay. So, sir, uh, can you share just the uh, install capacity of each of these three sites, uh, only total capacity? No, that may be difficult, you know, the, because there are difference in Kurkum, there are 12 plants, in the hit there are three plants, in Patalunga, there are three plants, you know, so, and all different. So, it's a bit difficult to share the capacities across. The okay, sir. okay, that's it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Rupani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, sir, you, in the con call just now you mentioned that there is an overlap of 40% of the products between Balaji and Alkyl. So I would like to know which products Alkyl makes which Balaji, Balaji does not make. Uh, to name a few, the main products. Uh, the ones that we make and Balaji does not make, uh, from the yeah. amines you say isopropylamine, butylamine, ethyl exylamine, cyclohexylamine, these are the amines which we make that he does not make. Mainly in the higher amines. In the, the derivatives, we have a few like diethyl hydroxylamine, dimethyl, uh, DPR, DMAPA, uh, number of other these things which we make, he doesn't make. And the reverse is also true. He makes DMF, NMP, DAE, uh, which we don't make. So there, there are a range of products which he's into and uh, what we are into. And, uh, and sometimes it's very significant for uh, uh, almost. Uh, up to 50 percent of his turnover is coming from products we don't make we even make you know okay thank you and my last question is that acn now balaji has said that that they are new 15,000 tons per annum will have a new talk technology and where they are able to withstand higher acidic acid prices so i would like to know our new acn plant is it uh, will their plant be better than uh, our uh, plant and technology I don't know what the technology is. I'll comment. You know. hey, it could be, you never know. Okay, and how much, uh, what is the consumption of India of ACN? Because uh, our capacity will now be 30,000 tons and their capacity will be about 24,000 tons. So, uh, your comments on this after their expansion? Yeah, the capacity today, I mean, the demand today in India is about uh, close to 30,000 tons, between 25 and 30,000 tons. So, but uh, we are at least, we are exporting, and uh, I don't think Balaji has started exporting yet, but uh, perhaps he is planning to do that. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
the next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investments Manager Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, whether we are protected by government of India uh, having import duty on uh, products which we are manufacturing, any? Yes, there is only one product where we have uh, 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 the protection, which is isopropylamine, monoisopropylamine. Uh, and that is also only against the Chinese, the three uh, Chinese uh, suppliers. There is only one product. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Over to you, sir. So I thank everybody for uh, listening to us uh, patiently, and uh, I hope we have been able to answer to your queries in a reasonable way and responsible way. Uh, I hope we will be happy with our performance in future, and uh, uh, we we are very confident that we'll be doing uh, in. Uh, more positive way on now onwards. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of HDFC Securities, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.